So what is it like being you? Because not only do you, you know, you're the front, you know, front and center every night with this group, but like you also write on the side. And it's not like, you know, me, I write books that don't get published. You actually write songs for other people and they're just only the biggest songs ever. Like Leaving Love was one of them, right? And what else did you write? You wrote a lot of other songs for Halo, yeah. Beyonce, Already Gone, Battlefield, J-Lo. I write a lot of songs. I've got yeah. some songs coming out with Rihanna, Adele, yeah. um, James Morrison, Open Full, a bunch of different stuff. But um, it's just kind of part of what I do. I, I love to create. Yeah. I also have written a script, and uh, I have a producer behind it, and wow. another writer that I'm actually collaborating with now to finish it. Nice. And I want to get into writing. I never got to realize or pursue acting, which I love. Yeah. I had a passion for for, for a decade. Yeah. And, um, so for me, the cabin, my wife was like, I can tolerate. She was with me when I was broke and like, you know, before music did anything and I literally couldn't pay a bill. Yeah. She's like, if you ever decide to pursue acting, I'm leaving you. So, and I don't blame her. So I, you know, I was like, I'm never going to do that. But I'd love to write movies. Okay. I'd love to own a restaurant and like yeah. just cook. I mean, there's a lot of things yeah. I want to do. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's all about creativity. Yeah. To me, it's like when you die, you know, whether you're writing books. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, if you wrote one, if you wrote one book that didn't get published, or two, ten books that did, right. regardless, I it's must, like. Sorry, I did get a celebrity mustache book published, but but it's still, I like yeah, you keep it going. This is good stuff. All right. <laughs> but you know what? If you create something, yeah. when you die, it's the only, it's about the only job in the world you can have that has a legacy. So for yeah, me. Right. All my ancestors going back to the 1600s built homes in New England. Right. So Connecticut, you drive to Connecticut, you're going to see my family's homes everywhere. Really? So for me, it's songs. Yeah. And when I die, they'll still be here. And when I die, it'll just say I wrote a mustache. But anyway, <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about the next single. Um, uh, Secrets. Uh, Secrets came out first in Europe as our first single, uh, like Germany and Austria, Switzerland. And it hit, I mean, when you put it out, we didn't know what was going to happen. And it went to number one quicker than Paul testing. It was just, it's, and um, not to say that that is a predictor because every country is different. Right. But I can say it's been out for two weeks and it's, it's been reacting twice as fast as all the records did. It's a difficult time to be a band because I was looking at the top 40 like the other day. Right. There are four bands out of 40 songs. Really? Us, us, Paramore, like, uh, Lady Annabelle and like one other band, yeah, yeah, five. Yeah. It's a game we dance and talk. What do you know? That's it. If you play an instrument, you're obsolete. Yeah. And so for us to have success that we're having, to me is like uh, it's, it's humbling and it's shocking and I'm and I'm excited about it because um, it's still music and I think with all the pop and all the everything, the dance music that people are obsessed with now, the pendulum swings like this. Yep. And then it will swing all the way back. It's right. been doing that for like 50 years. Yeah. And people want real instruments, real bands, real music. Again. And Secrets is a step in that direction for us. It's the biggest song, I think, possibly on the album. And um, we've got it coming out with Sorcerer's Apprentice, and we've got it coming out a really? bunch of different um, movies and TV shows that it's been yeah. licensed for. And, um, you know, it's we hope that it connects the way that it has in Europe. And um, it's the one song on the album that sounds like the same band that did all times. And so it's the connective tissue between those two albums. Do you do you ever, like, is there a night where you don't want to perform that? You know, there's yes. usually groups that are just like, well, enough already. Yes. But you have to play it anyway, and you know that that goes with the I have that probably in every tour, and it's a tour for us is three or four weeks. Yeah. I'll have maybe out of all those shows, one night, you know, at least once a month, where for whatever reason, that night, five minutes before the show, I'm like praying to God to like hit fast forward, and I just... I don't want to go on stage, yeah. I don't want to do the show. Right. For whatever, it could be any number of reasons. Do right. yeah. you ever want to like mix it up to a really different version? Some artists do that. We do that. We do that we a do little that. bit. We do cover songs, keep things interesting. Okay. Um, but uh, to me, when you really could start mixing up your own songs is when you're like three albums in and like you've had like five or six or seven hits. That way people like know the songs well enough. Right. We go out to like a new crowd and start mixing our own songs up. Yeah. And you know, I do apologize because I'm asking you a lot about apologize. But like, I mean, you, you guys have had, you know, Stop It's There and All the Right Moves, which, by the way, that's not like the theme song for the Tom Cruise movie 20 years too late, is it? It might be. Is it? I think See, that might be. Running around my, with my, 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 it might be where I got the title. Yeah? 
So, um, any other plans before you ship out? Where's, uh, where's the tour taking? Uh, we're headed to uh, Sundance, not the film festival, but okay. Sundance, Utah, like okay. Park City tomorrow. Nice. Back to Denver for a day, and then we're headed off to New York to do some some radio, TV, and then we're doing and then um, doing some stuff for C100 and some other stations in New York, and then uh, Boston, the whole you know, Greece, yeah. and then Prince Edward Island to do Regis and Kelly. Nice. And then we're we're done for like we're. We're actually going to take like a month off. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. And then we're opening up for you too. So. Are you kidding me? Touring with you too in September. Yeah. What's a month off look like for you? You're just writing for. I'll, I mean, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I'll be home. A month yeah. off for me is a lot of writing. Yeah. Uh, that month, I'm, I'm I'm in the studio with um, Carrie Hilson and Rihanna and Gavin McGraw. Um, a couple of people. That's insane. It's yeah. awesome. Well, how do you feel about going out on the road with you too? Uh. I kind of think like I should just quit afterwards. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's kind of like. I mean, for me, from a musical standpoint, it's like saying you fly the six peaks. You know, we played in just about I think every continent. We've done you know stuff I never thought we'd do. But to me, opening up for YouTube, doing while they're doing these, what was arguably the pinnacle of their careers yeah. tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like saying you've climbed Everest. What else do you want to climb? Exactly. No, nothing. None more. None more climbing. That's the answer. Yeah. Do you think um, if people came with taglines, what would yours be? To like Ryan Tedder. Ryan Tedder. You're a movie guy. Come on. Ryan Tedder. That just happened. Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your time, man. Thank you.